We couldn't beat them last week, so can we beat them this week? Welcome back, guys, to Sun Scotland TV for your Heart of Midlothian match preview. And it's weird, it doesn't really happen often, this, but we're taking on St Mirren. And funnily enough, our last game was against St Mirren, and it's in the league as well. So I don't know if this is the first time this has ever happened that you play a team back to back in the same competition if this has ever happened before then let me know guys I honestly cannot remember it I mean not even from a Hearts perspective from any team's perspective I just cannot remember playing the same team twice back to back I know it's happened sometimes where you might play them in the league and then you play them in the cup but no, two league games back to back, it seems very strange, but regardless, I'm hoping it's not the same result as last time. St Mirren did hold us to a 1-1 draw. I, did, I didn't see the full game, I've seen the highlights. From what I did see though, I, I, I don't think it would have been fair had we won that game. I know Robbie Nielsen thinks we've done enough in the second half. I, I personally thought a draw was probably about the fair result. I thought St Mirren um, played well in that game and I think they had more than enough chances to probably have a bigger lead in the uh, to take into half time. Thankfully though, we did get a draw and it did stop our little win and run, which is unfortunate. But you know, sometimes a draw is not the end of the world, especially away from home against a St Mirren side that is doing well, let's be honest, they've, they've got a good season. I know they're currently sitting in sixth, but they have a couple of games in hand over some of the teams above us, so it's very possible that once these game in hands are played, uh, St Mirren could be as high as fourth in the league table, and you never know. If they beat us, and then they win their game in hand, they could be above us in third. So, you know, St Mirren having a great season. They're the only team as well to beat Celtic. So, let's be honest here, right? A draw wasn't exactly what we wanted, but it's not the end of the world. It was a, it's a decent point against St Mirren, in my opinion. But I'm hoping that we can go one better this time. And uh, hopefully we can. Now, we have made signings in January. That's the good news. The bad news is I'm not sure. All of them will be available to play. Now, new signing James Hill could come straight into the squad. Apparently he is ready to go. He is available. If Robbie Nielsen chooses to select him, however, Kang Ran Kuel, who we recently just signed, will need to wait on international clearance before featuring. Not sure how long that's going to take, but uh, it, it definitely doesn't sound like it's going to be something we can resolve before tomorrow night. So I think it's fair to say he will not be playing. Uh, manager Robbie Nielsen has come out and says that Yutaro Oda, and our new Japanese signing, will be introduced gradually having not played since November. So, by the sounds of that, I mean, he could play, he's available. It's just that Nielsen doesn't want to risk him, he doesn't want to, like, rush him in. Could we potentially see him on the bench? Could he be introduced towards the latter half or latter stages of the game? I'd like to see him debut, but if he's not ready, then maybe it's better just to, you know, keep him, get some training done, and then we, he can feature when he is fully fit and ready to go. There's no need to rush him. I think we have more than enough options, uh, you know, in the squad. But let's speak of the options. We do have still quite a lot of injuries. I know some of our injuries have healed. I know we're beginning to get players back, but we'll still, for this game, be with Peter Haring, Gary mckay Stephen, uh, and then obviously you've got the long-term injuries, Benny Benenjami, Liam Boyce, Craig Halkett, and we all know about Craig Gordon. So, I mean, yeah, no, I've still got a lot of injuries, don't get me wrong. We've had some players over the past like month come back, but yeah, still a lot more injuries than we would have liked. Now, St Mirren do have three players suspended. Defenders Charles Dunn and Marcus Fraser and midfielder Ethan Erehan. And I think that's pretty good news for us because I think they're... All three decent players for St Mirren. Even uh, Ethan Everin's been performing well this season, so the fact that he will miss the game is an, another positive for us. Uh, Declan Gallagher and Ryan Strain are carrying knocks and will be assessed. Well, fullback Richard Tate has only just resumed training after a groin surgery. So, again, that doesn't sound too good. You don't want any surgery on your groin, that sounds bad. So, uh, maybe Richard Tate will not be available for this game either. And uh, yeah, it looks like both teams then are without uh, quite a lot of players here. Um, here's a fun fact though. Did you know Hearts have only won one of their last eight Scottish Premiership games played on a Friday? Uh, the, <laughs> the other seven results were one draw and six defeats. Now, I get it, this is just a total coincidence. I'm sure what Davy play on has no you know, impact on whether we win, lose or draw. I mean, that is pure coincidence, but it's not good, <laughs> is it? It's not good at all. But yeah, in terms of this, I do expect us to put in a better performance than we did last week. I do expect us to dominate the game. 
and be the better team because we are the better team. We've got the better players. I believe we've got the better manager. A much bigger club at home. I don't mind drawing as much. I can accept a draw against St Mirren away from home. But at home, then uh, we really have to be winning this game. You know what, guys? I'm going to say we will win it. I do think we will win it. It won't be easy because, like I said, St Mirren are decent. But I'm going to go with us winning this game by... I'm going to go two goals to one. I'm going to, I think it will be tight, but I'd be annoyed if we don't get the win. We need to push home this advantage we've got. You know, we've worked hard to get ourselves back into third place. And I don't want to start, you know, throwing away the small gap that we have. Instead, I want to build on it. I want to increase it. And I'm hoping we can do it Friday night against St Mirren. So I'm going to go 2-1 Harps, guys. Let me know your predictions down below. I'll be back for the match with you. I uh, will be able to watch this game, finish work around 6 o'clock. So I'll be <laughs> rush out of traffic, man, <laughs> to get home and uh, plant my ass in front of the, unfortunately, TV. Hopefully, hopefully look to get a game, to, to get to a game like, towards the end of the season or something like that. If not, next year. Thinking about seriously moving back to Scotland and then hopefully getting a season ticket. That's, that's the dream, but when you live in a different country, man, it's fucking sucks so it's going to be it's going to be the television for me but yeah who knows maybe a takeaway as well if hearts win if they don't win then i'll probably just have a fucking slice of bread and a glass of water and go to bed and cry myself to sleep because my weekend will be ruined anyway guys that's it i'm saying 2-1 let me know what you say i'll catch you in the next one till then peace